Hi, and uh, welcome to my first Photoshop tutorial on how to restore old photos. I'm um, just opening up the file at the moment. I've scanned this in at 2400-bit uh, TIFF format um, to preserve its integrity and lossless format. Um, just now the first step I usually do, and I should tell you there's about 10 different ways to do things in Photoshop, and none of them are wrong. Uh, everyone just has their own preference on what they do and how they do it. So this is how I do things. Um, I find this the easiest way. Um, other people will do it differently, and that's fine. So the first thing I do is in this situation I just want to restore the photo and as you can see it's been scanned not quite square so I will do a lasso tool caps lock gives you a more precise cursor and just select around the photo or where the photo should be if there's corners missing and that will become a selection and then I do a, a copy and a paste so it's on a new layer um, that just allows me to work just on the photo um, by selecting that and leaving the background as it is <coughs> so as you can see, there's quite a bit of age and damage and wear on this very old photo. This lovely lady here is my grandmother, so this photo would be around 90 years old. So it's seen better days. <coughs> so first thing I do is select the photo layer, which I've just done by holding the command key on the Mac. Then I will zoom in, and I really don't like that zoom tool, but I'll leave it on for now because I can't be bothered figuring it out. Um, I'm using a Wacom tablet, so this may go a little bit quicker than standard mouse things. Um, there's two tools that I tend to use. One of them's here, it's called the clone stamp. Um, I use this fairly regularly. Uh, and it's very good to select one area and paste it over the top, hence the clone stamp. The other tool I use is the spot healing brush. Is that what it's called? I always call it the band-aid because it has a band-aid for an icon, um, which also works. Um, this, use, this takes values from around where you've selected and replaces it, so it's good for little blemishes, dust spots, um, freckles, that kind of thing. Um, and we'll get through some of the other um, tools as we go along, but clone stamps, the first one that I'll use. So that's it there. You can, so without the caps lock, you can see the size of the brush that will be used. And if you need to change that at any time, that's just up standard place up, up top here where it says I've got it at 500 and always use a soft brush so don't use one of these hard ones because it looks like you've done it in Microsoft Paint um, not dissing Microsoft Paint of course um, just use a soft brush um, it's more natural feel now you hold the option key which will give you this little crosshair and that allows you to select a, a sample area. So click and you can see inside the brush now is a sample of what I've just sampled up here. So if I click and start colouring that tear will disappear. And it's, it's a pretty quick process and occasionally you'll like this is just sampled this little dot over here so there's the occasional have to re-grab and redo um, and this doesn't have to be perfect this is just a 
more of a base coat and so this is this will get rid of all those unsightly tears that have happened on old photos and you can probably see that my grandmother has unsuccessfully tried to repair this using glue um, which has actually discolored the corner of this photo so don't use glue glue's bad um, it's usually acidic and it will over time destroy your photos now I'm still getting used to this Wacom tablet myself so excuse me if I do things a little strangely or start talking to myself or even potentially swearing um, it's a bit of a learning curve but I have found that it is much faster than previous methods which would be with the mouse which is what probably most of you will be using unless you have a Wacom tablet now I'm leaving this area outside the frame as I'm only really interested in restoring the photo but of course this could just be done by selecting one of the lines with the clone tool and it's not letting me do it because I've selected it but you could just clone that straight down and as the lines are uniform and it would blend out very quickly using the hand tool or spacebar you can scroll around the photo and just look for any other damage along the edges as you can see the edges of these photos this photo in particular is very weathered and worn and it's just a matter of continuing the lines off what's already there clicking with the clone stamp lining it up using its guide and brushing over and this can be a rather boring process so depending on how long this video is I'm probably going to edit this section out but I'm going to keep talking to myself as I do it because that's just what I do and there's some parts you have to get a little inventive with especially with curves and things and just mixing it up to try and get the, the end result that you're after now I've already done this photo before so this is um, I know that it's achievable I've never done it with the Wacom so maybe it's not achievable we'll find out so as you go around you'll notice things start to look like they should photos slowly restoring as you go you can find little bits of damage as well aging and colored spots and things that should not be on there and just brush them out clone them out click and swipe and try not to go too far from your selection um, as tones tend to change throughout the image as you can see with this very colorful tree background well, it's not really colorful because it's black and white but it's very complex so going too far away will cause it to not blend in very well you will be able to see the difference afterwards even if you can't see it now and a lot of this can be guesswork obviously I don't know if this tree continues up to here but for the sake of this tutorial it does um, areas like this where there's a straight line 
These are fairly simple. You just need a little bit of patience and a sturdy hand to go option click on one of the lines and you can see that's the line here that I've just clicked on. And if I continue that up to here, I'm very carefully clicking, that line can continue up. And knowing that it's a uniform background as a curtain, the wrinkles in the curtain should just continue straight up on all cases. So if you get one match, it should match all of them, except for there where it's starting to sample her hair. Always pay attention to where it's sampling and your day will go a lot quicker. Please excuse my rambling. I generally have music on when I'm doing this sort of work and therefore I'm usually singing like an idiot. Now, as long as you can get it most of the way, there's another tool that I'll use in a moment that will be able to repair a lot of the not quite there issues that I've created, which I'll explain as I go because I'm not making much sense as I work. Please forgive me. So, we've almost gone all the way around. My Nan. Hi Nan. Hope you're doing well. You can see always using the soft brush blends things so much easier. Than a hard brush would. You'd, with a hard brush you'd very easily see the edges of what I'm doing here and it would not be in any way convincing. So we're almost finished, I'll just quickly power through here. Clicking closer and closer as the area that I'm needing runs out, being just light floor area okay so I've missed one little spot there which I can clone like that and that can also get the damage out from right up against the chair there and it's gone now the next tool which I'll just zoom out so that you can see what I've just done. Deselecting. So this is the before and we've just done this. So that's taken me about five minutes just to restore the edges and already the photo is looking a lot better than it did. But we still, still have a way to go. Now Zoom back in, starting in the same corner just so that I don't lose my mind. And now we're going to use the Band-Aid tool, which is the one up here, the Spot Healing Brush. You can press the J on your keyboard or just hit the Band-Aid on your toolbar, which is this one. Now this has got Content Aware in here. Um, I will be decreasing the brush quite a lot down to probably about 300 and again using a soft brush why won't it let me select the brush I will turn the hardness to about 10% um, giving it a much softer feel now what this one does this tool is 
you can see just here inside my cursor some light dots just click on them and color them in and they disappear it's a very simple tool and with some practice you can you can get quite a few dots out in one hit um, it doesn't always work if I was to do that for example and it's proving me to be a liar sometimes it can send things that look quite funky looking um, as it grabs for example it will grab part of this area and this area if I was to select this dot and sometimes it can really cause grief so the smaller your brush the better it is to use um, you can shrink this right down and the smaller it is the more precise it is so you're able to get each and every dot without causing any problems with the background now, as I'm using my Wacom tablet I'm able to use the pressure of the pen to get a very small part or a very large part of the sample this is obviously not possible with a mouse as the mouse is on or off there is no pressure unless you have a gaming mouse or something funky that I've never heard of but generally it's not possible with a mouse so like I said just dot by dot and a lot of people especially in the industry find this sort of work very boring I don't mind it as long as I've got good music um, or I have um, an interesting photo which this one is um, because my grandmother is in it so I'm actually restoring a lovely old family photo so this this technique can be used very quickly depending on the level of expertise I guess that you need or the level of restoration that is needed for the final photo if you just need to remove a few dust spots off a photo this tool is really good um, this is one of the ones that they would use in the fashion industry to remove um, lint balls or even freckles off a, off a model during a photo shoot um, it's widely used it's not the only way to do this you can use the clone stamp as well or instead of but again there's no right or wrong way to do this just excuse me as I back up a little bit there's a few I can be a rather pedantic person in my Photoshop and other times I am the exact opposite today for you I am being a real niggler with detail so I'd say that that's the spots are pretty well done zooming out again and we have a I'll just deselect that we have a before and after and it is starting to look a lot better but it still has a way to go now this part is called the levels now you can access the levels and I'll, I always get this wrong because I'm so used to shortcuts levels right there in the image adjustments levels menu I use the shortcut which is here command L which is command L now you get this window now most people will start messing with the sliders and 
seeing what they can do. And you can generally get a pretty good result by cancelling out all of this area where there's no histogram. And you might level that up and then you get the medium and do something about there. And a lot of people would say, look, that looks pretty good. Now, before and after, it, it looks okay. But, now if I hold the Option key, I can reset that back to what it was. I'm zooming back in for this step. This is another function that not everyone knows how to use or cares how to use, and it's these three little buttons here. We have a black, a grey, and a white eyedropper. And these use, these are to set the black, the white, and the medium point of the image. And they're super simple to use. All you need to do is find something on the photo that would probably be the darkest point. Now, I'm going to suggest that in here, in this little gap up here would probably be actually here would be the blackest point of the photo so I'll select the black eyedropper and go right here and say black and immediately the photo looks heaps better but obviously too dark so now we go to the white and this is to set the white point now in this photo all these people are wearing white shirts and you'd expect them to be white so you'd find the one that looks the whitest which I would say is this point and select white now, now you can do the midpoint grey which is I don't always use this one as it can be a bit of hit and miss but if I select anywhere and you can see it already washes out the photo, it takes out that sepia tone. I prefer to leave it, so I've just undone that, which is Apple Z, undo. Now that's the before and the after. Before again and after. So you can see that the difference there restores the photo very quickly in minimal time so I'm going to hit OK. Now, a lot of people would say that that's finished and would say that they're happy with that. And I am to some degree. But now there's another tool that I want to show you, which is the burn tool, which is there. You can press the O key. Now there's multiple tools on this button. So if you click and hold, there's dodge, burn and sponge. Dodge makes things lighter, burn make them darker, and the sponge it just desaturates. I don't really use that one much. For now we're going to use the burn tool which looks like a hand for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it does. And you can see in this area at the side of the chair you can see some fading in the photo. So if I click, I'm using a mouse now just for something different, click and drag and it can darken that area of the photo and each time you release and click um, I, I currently have mine set to 30% if I boosted that to 100 it would look ridiculous so this is what 100 burn does click click and click and it it does things a lot quicker, but it seems to be a bit ridiculous. So I generally do 30 or 40 percent. So I do 30 percent, and it's got protect tones, so it should protect the tones in here. And I just go around and look at all the the points, especially. And this is one part that a lot of people miss is the where the shadow falls on the faces and you can see that the faces look a little bit flat so I just shadow them a little bit one click one drag very quickly 
and it gives a little bit more depth in the faces. And sometimes you might have to drop it down to 20 and you can you can actually get to those percentages by using your numbers along the top of the keyboard. And just click and drag. And I'm still a bit concerned about this area, so I'm going to show you yet another trick. All these tricks for free. You should be very happy. There's another trick that I use. And firstly, we select the color. And it doesn't really matter the, about the color, but I go for the orange red end of the spectrum and somewhere in the dark brown area, about there is good. And I select the brush tool, which is, it actually looks like a brush. So go Adobe. And in the brush drop down menu, it's normally on normal. Go all the way down the bottom to color. Change the opacity to around 70 or 60. We'll go 60. Less is more, folks. And with the photo selected, click and drag over the photo like that. And you can see I've selected a color that's probably too dark, but you can actually apply a sepia tone in that manner. Wait for the screen to catch up. So we've got before and after. So I'm just going to go back and select a better color because that color is pretty terrible. Um, maybe a cooler, more of a cold brown like there. And still at 60%. And this stage is very hit and miss. You can select a color that you like just to give it that aged look. I'm just wait for my computer to catch up. Other than that, sometimes my computer stops responding. So with all of that done, I will now zoom, I won't zoom out. Why would I? Because now you can see the whole thing. So now we have a before and an after. And in a matter of 15 minutes, 20 minutes, we've restored this photo that's 90, almost 95 years old, um, back into a new lease of life. Now, of course, you don't need to use the sepia tone. You can leave it as grayscale if you'd like. Um, completely up to you. I like the sepia tone personally on some of these really old photos. But if you'd like to leave them black and white or even experiment, that's generally up to you, of course. I'm not going to arrest you for it. Um, yeah, so th these are just some of the methods used to restore old family photos. And these are the, the ways that I do things. Now, other designers and other photo retouchers will do them completely differently. And as I said at the start, there's no right or wrong way to do it. As long as you're happy with the result, that's all that matters. It, obviously, if you have a client, it matters if they're happy with it as well. But there's nothing more to say there. This, this photo has been restored and with the ease of reprinting it at a local photo booth, this photo can live on another hundred years. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to making further clips for you in the future.